Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of RSAC 2024. RSA, my, my co-host Shelly Kramer, great to see you, great to be with you. We're talking 45,000 people. I mean, it's, people are starting to roll in. Four days, wall-to-wall -wall coverage. The Cube's going to be here at Moscone West. Jack Berkowitz is here, Cube alum. He's the chief data officer now at security, spelt with a T-I. Jack, welcome back to the Cube. Good to Thanks. see you again. Good to see you, Dave. Yeah, last Good time we you, talked Kelly. was in 2022. We're at Snowflake Summit. You know, data and security are coming together, right? That's sort of the real theme here and kind of the premise of security, the company. Tell us why you went from being practitioner, now you're on the vendor side, still a practitioner, but yep. wh why'd you make that move? Really two things. Um, well, as a practitioner for five and a half years as an enterprise CDO, seeing that interleave was there. Um, at my last company at ADP, we were um, on top of one of the biggest data sets in the world. That's why we were working with Snowflake, working yeah. with a lot of other companies as well. And guess what, we had nation state issues that we had to deal with, we had normal data leaks that we had to uh, deal with, we had coordination issues that we had to deal with. And actually it was those seams, those coordination between me, the chief security officer, privacy officer, operations, all of that coming together was a problem for us. Yeah. And so I turned out to be a customer of security. And it helped us solve the, not just the coordination and the finding of information, but that coordination problem. Once you solve that coordination problem, you can lock things down. So, at the next phase of my career, I was like, well, where do I want to spend my time? And I wanted to spend my time working on data problems, yeah. working with other CDOs and chief security officers. That was what was interesting to me. You got a cool, cool demo on your website. Yeah, actually, check it out. The website's yeah. security.ai. It's, it's security ti with an, with an i, dot ai. And you've got the public cloud, which has become the first line of defense. You got data cloud, you got a little snowflake uh, yep. logo. Mm -hmm. You got private clouds, you got SaaS clouds, you got you know, the public clouds, of course, the big three. Um, so your focus, you're saying, is the data flow between all those estates and protecting the seams in between. Is that correct? That's it, 100%. So, you know, any big company right now has a hybrid situation. Nobody is 100% in Microsoft, nobody's 100% in Google, nobody's 100% in AWS. Right. You know, you have your own data centers, you have all of this information flowing around. And when you want to take a look at it, and you want to say, hey, wait a second, where is my customer information? Where's my PII information? Or better yet, where is, you know, how is this data being duplicated? How many copies of this data do we have? Try to find that today. And so what we're doing as security is building what we call a data command graph that shows all of that information in context. And it's not just where the data is, but what are, what's the uh, sensitive data encompassed inside of that? What are the regulations? How do the regulations come into play? How is your security posture uh, in, into play with that? And, uh, and now what we're talking about, which we just announced uh, last week, how do LLMs start to play into all of that as well? So yeah. it's really um, trying to get your hands on that complexity. That data, really command cool. graph, data command graph is a, a, like a visual knowledge graph? Yeah, is that right? yeah, 100%. So we have a set of graph um, uh, representations that allow you to represent not just the data and the flow, but also business processes, the like I said, the regulations or the policies, different countries around the world, different localities inside the US, all that together and you can visualize it. And so you can say, hey, let me see, you know, where is this information? Let me see the people reflected in that information in a people graph. Let me see who has access to information through like a data access graph. All of that put together in one context. Do you consider this like a governance solution? Is it a, is it a posture management uh, yes. solution? Yeah. It's actually all of that, yeah. right? <laughs> That's what I was okay. saying, yes, it, it, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> it's, it's this idea that you, if you thought about those things as separate pieces, you're going to have disconnects, right? This way you have one continuous view. I happen to be doing posture management. I happen to be doing data governance. I happen to be doing AI governance. What, what's the difference to me, right? I'm a chief data officer, I need to see it all. Mm -hmm. And so I don't want to go to different tools. I just want to see one continuous 
view. So I have a question because some of our, we did some research in partnership with ESG, our, our research partner recently, and I think we went into that research kind of ETR. thinking. ETR. I'm sorry, ETR, <laughs> yeah, oh my we gosh. We love ESG yeah. too. Yeah. We yeah. love ESG, sorry, <laughs> yes, ETR, our research partner, yes. Big, good catch there. Um, I, I think one of the things we went in expecting to see is that we would see more of a consolidation of vendors and tools in the market, and that's actually not what's happening. What's happening is, is that people are kind of adding to their security vendors and they're using solutions, they're looking for best in class solutions and, and moving away from the concept of just one platform is the best solution. So that's some of the mindset that's in the market right now. How do you combat that? Because what you're saying, we just had this conversation, yes, 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 you solve for all these things. How do you go into a sales pitch with a prospective customer? Is it you know, do you get a foot in the door and kind of show them some key capabilities and then hope to sell them more as you go along? How does that, what's your strategy there? How does that well, work? I think there's two sides to it, right? Obviously, we would love to have a, 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 a good footprint inside of a customer, yeah. for sure. But there are some best of breed capabilities. Everything we've built, including all of our system internally, is all based on APIs. And so we can integrate and actually push either up or down uh, information to those other tools. So I'll give you a good example. We'll work with Lacework on, okay. on, on certain aspects Soon to be of what Lacework yeah. um, Or maybe not. Or maybe <laughs> not, right? Or maybe yeah. not. Uh, we, we, we work with some of the data catalog vendors. So if somebody wants to have a data catalog, we can sense the data in real time and we can update the data catalogs in real time. We can push down security uh, to Snowflake or to Databricks. And so I think it's an understanding as to where the edges are of all these best breed things, but you still need to bring those together. Mm -hmm. You know, asking, asking uh, either a security group or a data group to integrate a whole bunch of the tools is tricky. Is, is tricky, right? How much integration do they want to do versus actually doing their job about security? Mm -hmm. So you're cloud agnostic, you're, yep. you're, you're data platform agnostic. That's right, run, and, it, and it'll actually run inside of on-prem databases as well, right? So we can scan inside of, um, inside of on-prem data centers, sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so, no, I get it. So, so historically, that would just be a lot of, and it still is, I'm sure, just a lot of roll up your sleeves, do the integrations, um, just understanding each of those individual platforms. I, I, people say, oh, I'm so sick of talking about LLMs. I, I'm not. Yeah. I love to talk about <laughs> LLMs. These things are moving so quickly. How are you, you mentioned you just made an announcement. Tell, what, what is that news? Tell us yeah, more about so that. Yeah, so we already have connectors to over 400 systems, yeah, okay. right? We're already detecting all of this data inside of these systems to understand if it's PII data or data that you don't want to move across, right? One of the biggest barriers to using the LLMs right now is companies are nervous. It, what information am I actually putting across that? Even you know, regulatory, is that a processor, a sub-processor, all of it gets into play. So what we've announced are a series of, of firewalls, right? Both for query as well as retrieval um, that protect that information in context, right? So we are actively understanding the data as it's flowing from those source systems all the way across to the LLMs and then back out. As well as, let's say you're using a vector database to store things. You know, what are you actually protecting once you bring it out? So LLMs that sit in that entire pipeline process um, is what we've announced. So you're ensuring, you're kind of putting a wrapper around the data to make sure that that data doesn't leak that to, data the, doesn't to leak. the LLM vendor or any other vendor that's, that's right. not supposed to see it. That's right, that's right. I mean, we just see, you see these examples. Um, just last week or the week before in Austria, the first lawsuit about somebody able to extract private information directly out of one of the, um, one of the LLM vendors, right, by just, constructing a proper query, they were able to get that information out. And you know, a lawsuit's going to entail about that. So we're really about allowing corporations, allowing other smaller companies to be able to use these LLMs with a degree of confidence. So help me understand this, because I get, sometimes I get confused because you know, every vendor, you know this, yep. uh, says we could do it all, yep. and then you get in there and you're like, yeah, but. So I think about AWS Bedrock, right? And, yep. and you know, the announcements that Swami just put out the other yep. day, uh, much of it was you know, similar to what we're talking about, even though they've, they've sort of been dealing with LLM leakage for a while. So is it the case that you pick up, it's just an example, I'm sure there's Azure examples or Google examples, but you pick up where that cloud vendor leaves off, 
or is it the case where the shared responsibility model kind of requires you to do more for the for the for what the cloud vendor is promising. In other words, are the cloud vendors over-promising and you have to come in and, and help? Yeah, I don't, or, do, I don't or know. Is it, it, yeah. or, is it, or is it a case where, okay, the cloud vendor has that covered, but there's all this other stuff in your estate that's not covered and you pick that up. Yeah, exactly. That. That's really the part, Dave. Yeah. So Swami, Swami and I know each other well, yeah. right? Um, I presented on stage with him before right. and, and we, I was an early user of Bedrock. Number two or three, actually. Yeah, okay. And so, yeah, exactly that. There's aspects of data governance, there's aspects of data security, there's aspects of really just operations inside of a company that Bedrock isn't going to do today. On-prem right? databases, On -prem as an databases, example. Yeah. As an example. And also the entire workflow around a company. You know, what is that approved data for legal to say those are the documents to use, as opposed to the documents that somebody just happened to drop on an S3 because you requested them via email, right? So that data governance portion of it is something that, that, that we'll pick up and we'll help take yeah, care of. Yeah, because Amazon has no visibility on that. That's not their purview, that's right. your responsibility. Yeah. So talk to me about the LLM sort of arms race that's going yeah. on right now. Llama 3 just came out, I think it was, was it last week? I can't keep track of it. Yeah, I think it was last week or two weeks ago. It looks you know, very capable. Um, Snowflake announces Arctic to, to you know, compete with Databricks, DBRX, and it's going to be interesting to see if those guys are actually going to fund the LLMs. Uh, but they're very specific to their, to their world. Somebody told me the other day there's 800 um, large language models now in, um, in uh, uh, Hugging Face, which is just- 2,400. Which, which now it's 2,400. 2, so it's, it's tripled yeah. since I got since that. Since yesterday. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. since yesterday. So there yeah. you go. Um, how do you keep track of all this stuff? What are, your, what are you seeing in the market? Uh, what are your concerns? What are you loving? Well, so, so it's interesting, right? Um, I had been working, my teams had been working with LLMs the earlier stage, BERT and Roberta and those things, for years, right? Then 18 months ago, I'm sitting, meeting with a VC saying, tell me what's coming. And the next day, the OpenAI announcement came out. <laughs> so, I knew, I had about 12 hours of warning, right? <laughs> um, it's the arms race and it's, and it's wide open and I think it's confusing for people, right? I think it's confusing because, you know, what does it really mean if I have a context window now going from 200,000 to a million to, what does it actually mean to somebody, right? right? What does it actually mean to, to, to tune an LLM because I happen to be a, a, a hospital system and I need medical codes. So I think a lot of it's about confusion right now in the market, right? Um, what, what we see is a lot of people wanting to maybe not lock in one way or another and that's why flexible, um, you know, keeping your data flexibly aligned with those things is important, right? Your ability to switch LLMs if you need to, your ability to keep your data secure for yourself, right. your ability to configure your operations uh, dynamically is important. Um, I think it'll be interesting. I don't think there's enough market uh, for all of these companies to come out on the other side. You know, at a certain point, we're going to see a pullback in the spend because there's other things that IT, other right. things that security needs to spend money on. Right, and what you'll see right now is a lot of money shifted. Right, yeah. so yeah. I talked to a lot no of question. friends. I mean, we have friends in the business. Right, you know, wait a second, I had a bad quarter, but this other guy had a great quarter. Right, right. it'll yeah. balance out, I think. Yeah. Right. So, how are you using LLMs? How do you decide which LLMs to apply where? That's a great question. You know, one of the things that, that I believe in strongly is actually measuring the outputs, right? And we're going to start to see these capabilities uh, emerge. So in summarization, so a big use of LLMs right now is in call centers, summarizing a call on behalf of people. Right. Well, there's actually a summarization metric called a Rouge metric. You know, instead of giving me these, these strange precision about passing an SAT score, what's your Rouge metric for a test set, right? That would be, Super interesting to see. So what we um, uh, what we what we talk to our clients about is making sure that you're measuring constantly as you move forward and define. You know, it's a classic thing for machine learning. It doesn't change for LLMs. What's the definition of good? Right. We yeah. we used to optimize models to. You know, there's a good point. Well, there's a good point on these things too. Yeah. Right. Why do I think that? I just saw J.P. Morgan is going to build an index GPT. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. I Maybe saw that, that was yesterday or last week, you know, how do I know that's good versus the Bloomberg 
model. I don't. Yeah. So some way of, of measuring is, is important. Okay, how about open source? Are you, are you using open source LLMs? And, and are you concerned about some of the, you know, the, the, I mean, you guys are smaller, so you, maybe, you know, maybe they're designed for, for ByteDance you know, using it or, or Google, but are you concerned about some of the, the, the terms being restrictive in open source? Well, I think the terms being restrictive is an issue. Supply chain attacks is even a, a bigger yeah. issue, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so one of the things that we do inside of security, we're not doing the actual scanning of the models, but we actually will expose those model scans as model cards for people using our system. And so our system's flexible. You can pick OpenAI, you can pick Hugging Face, you can pick any of the different LLMs to use. Um, but while you're doing that in your firewall, we'll also expose some of those metrics so that you can take a look at, you know, hey, are there, are there vulnerabilities here inside of this code? Mm. You know, um, It'll be interesting, you know, the Manchurian candidate, um, <laughs> that's a real thing in LLM world, right? It's a real thing in machine learning and we need to, we need to stay vigilant on Explain top of that. Explain what you mean by that. Well, you know, all these, all LLMs are is just compressed data. That's really what it is, mm -hmm. it's just compressed data. And just like, just like you could have a SQL in, in, in injection attack from 10, 15 years ago to extract data out, imagine you were to have a prompt attack that could extract information out that was sitting there, or better yet, or worse yet, imagine you have a prompt attack to instruct the LLM to do something inappropriate, yeah. right? And that was seeded in a data set that was trained a long time ago, or even freshly done, if you don't have control of your data, that is a real possibility. And so poisoning attacks is one of the OWASP top 10 yeah. security threats. And you know, what we're doing in security is making sure that, that you can operate really successfully by, by encountering and taking care of those problems. It's like a ticking time bomb that yeah. nobody knows is there um, <laughs> from legacy. I, I have a, um, it's kind of an off the wall question, but, but it's relevant to a chief data officer it's not really directly related to security, but it is in the sense that you could simplify things. When you think about the, the typical data pipeline today, you've got, you've got many, many, um, oftentimes dozens of hyper-specialized individuals doing data engineering, data cleansing, analytics, you know, you know the yep. data pipeline very well. Yep. Do you see, and, and it's been built up over the last 10 plus years, and some of the most sophisticated data pipelines in the world you know, have these really highly specialized individuals doing something, and they're very dependent upon each other. How do you see AI broadly, not just LLMs and Gen AI, but just AI, the AI awakening, how do you see it affecting that really complex data pipeline that kind of grew out of the Hadoop world? Is yeah. that whole thing going to get blown away? Uh, I think there's going to be automation across that pipeline for mm -hmm. sure. I mean, one of the capabilities we have in security is we can infer a, a, you know, a data lineage. Yeah. We can actually watch data elements move not just within a system, but across systems. So we have this interesting demo where you can see a CSV going to a Snowflake staging table, going to a Snowflake star, then off to Tableau, and then up. All automated, 100% yeah. automated. Well, I had to pay you know, people hundreds of hours <laughs> to build that by hand, yeah. and it was always out of date. Right. If I don't need to do that, if I can just have the system there, then I have a live operating system. I'm in, you know, again, to, to hit the marketing term, I'm in command of my data. Yeah. You know, all of the, it's, it's like the notion of building a blueprint that's continuously updating. Yeah. And I think that's the premise, or the promise, excuse me, of, of AI in those data pipelines. And it really compresses that end to end life cycle. Jack, it's great having you back. Thanks good so to much see for coming yeah. back in theCUBE. Great to have you. Great. And, and good luck with the rest of the show. Thank you. All right, keep it right there. Dave Vellante for Shelly Kramer and David Linthicum. We'll be right back. We're at Moscone West, the live coverage of RSA 2024. We'll be right back. You're watching theCUBE. <laughs>